Hello and welcome to the Undercut Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Timur Albus Daly, and joining me to review all the action from Formula 2 in Azerbaijan and the streets of Baku is motoring journalist and motorsport pundit Jesse Billington. How are you today? Uh, two things. One, you can tell I wrote my own introduction for this one because it's very yes, self-analyzing. Yes, I was questioning that as I was reading. That's yeah, you, you hadn't read that before. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, very much a self-suck there. And two, all the action from Formula 2 in Azerbaijan can be summed up in one simple sentence. Ollie Bauman won it all. Thank you very much. Good night. Um, mm. yeah. What can well, people find you, Jesse? <laughs> uh, they can find me on... Well, I think we'll dive a bit deeper into it. There's a bit more to say from it. I've certainly got some notes on it. I think the first thing we really ought to touch on is F1 Academy. That's the that's the yes. big feeder series news. Um, it happened. We don't really know what happened, but it happened. Um we I'll let saw, you take the first bit of this. Yes, yeah, we saw the opening trio of races in Austria, and well, I say we saw the opening trio of races in Austria. We didn't technically was it will be waiting and likely until after this podcast comes out to actually see any meaningful coverage of it. Um, it seemed to be a weekend impacted by technical infringements and penalties that were tricky to stay abreast of abreast of through their social media feeds and the live timing, which is the only way to really know what's going on with that series. It's all basically a bit cock a hoop um yeah there was penalties all over the place uh pulling had dominated in the qualifying sessions but was later relegated to the back of the field when her rodan carlin failed a tech inspection uh this also impacted her teammates edgar and gilks um and this saw marta garcia inherit the poles for races one and three they inverted the top end of the grid similar to how they do for f2 and f3 for the second race of the weekend, um, which saw uh, Amna al take the win from pole. So beautiful to see her make a brilliant comeback as well after having a horrific no, no, crash. That was, no, no, was that, that was her sister? Had that one. I've lost track already. But Again, it took really... one race to catch her out on that one, getting them mixed up. One race to get me caught out. It would be great if I'd actually seen any of the coverage that might have explained who the drivers are, where they'd come from, what sort of things they're facing up to this season. If I'd seen any coverage, I'd have known that. Oh, that's not on me. That's on F1 Academy not telling me. Um, yeah, it, it's tricky to really say what the hell happened. Um, yeah, we, we still don't really know a lot about it. I mean, they announced a presenter, Darren Adesasoy from Formula E, if you have been watching that. And uh, they had Harry Benjamin doing commentary for it and down in London. I friend think. of the they podcast. Film cameras, friend of the podcast, of course, yes. Course. and uh, film cameras at the track recording everything so why not bloody show it if not sky then again why not f1 tv or channel 4 whisper had it when w series was was going there and, Chan- and channel 4 worked with them to produce that so i don't see what the problem is there heck just stick it on a youtube as formula e has been relegated to youtube for a lot of this season it's not rocket science and it makes zero sense and it's kind of reiterating a lot of what we've said previously and just seems like a big sh- shot in the foot and a big step backwards and like I said W Series managed to have their races broadcast and they started everything from scratch this is Formula 1 backed for crying out loud and it just seems ridiculous yeah it's they've picked up the pieces of W Series and sort of gone okay great with a bit more money and a bit more polish we could really make something from this cool we've sort of made something from this they've got very much a very cool look they kind of took of a Monty car. Python route instead of just went, and now for something completely, completely different. different and no they've made a what looks like a very sensible racing series they've got spec cars they've got proper teams coming into this so there's this great pathway from F1 Academy into F3 F2 and so on and so forth we've got recognisable names we've got Rodan Carlin we've got MP Motorsport we've got Pramer in there we've got like mm. these recognisable things and the cars are not just a sort of run of the mill F4 car or an F3 car it's got its own unique rear wing, rear, rear wing it's got a lot of elements that make it very unique and a demanding drive to prove that these are talented drivers which they've likely already proven from series they've come from w series regional f4s freckers all sorts of things we've got some great drivers and great talent in this we've got clearly some great talent in presenting darian and harry benjamin coming into this fantastic it's names you want to see it's names you love hearing they can present they can really bring this sport the sort of pitch that it needs to speak from they can make it appealing more so to a broader range of listeners because they're fantastic people to listen to and chat and sort of engage in a sort of repartee with as the, the hosts in that yeah, sort of... I mean Benjamin would have been chosen to do F3 stuff and she and uh, Darren would have been chosen to do Formula E stuff if they hadn't been good at what they were doing to begin with so it's kind of it's just it's just so stupid but yeah we, we, we won't we'll go far too down that rabbit hole if we're not careful and we won't we'll go do too it far. again next weekend anyway yes um, yeah 
Race results I will quickly go over. Race 1, Marta Garcia, P1. Bianca Bustamante, friend of the podcast, P2. And Jessica Edgar then inherited P3 after Maria Marti got a, uh, I think, either a penalty or a disqualification. Technical I infringement, I think. Entirely on that one. Technical infringement, that was it. Race 2 then saw Amra Kabasi win, like you mentioned. Leah Bula in second and Lola Lovin Fossey in third. And then race 3 saw Marta Garcia in first, Hamdra Al Kabasi in second, and Amra Al Kabasi in third, which is excellent because I'm already getting that sister sister rivalry straight out of the box. Now it would just be nice to see it. But hey, anyhow, Formula 2, Baku, sprint race, go. Uh, yes, well, a very F2 qualifying before that saw Bem and Pinch pole in the very final moments with a confident drive. Uh, not a solid weekend for fan or podcast sort of fan favourites, uh, Aimu Iwasa, the championship leader, by all measures somehow. Um, only person to have won not two. Not anymore, I don't think. Not any, mm, I no, don't know, I haven't anymore. checked yet. He's no. not anymore. Um, after a sort of torrid weekend for the guy, but um, we're still a fan of you, Aimu, if you listen. We, we love you. Dearly, fantastic little come on guy. The podcast. Um, yeah, come on, have a chat with us. We care about your racing. Pit stop boys might not. Um, anyway, sprint race, some beautiful F2 chaos abounded in the sprint, all coming to a summit with the lead five drivers running wide into turn one after a safety car period, something triggered unsurprisingly by Roy Nassani. Um, Halga clipped the barrier on turn one exit after, despite the fact he was leading and just sort of ran wide, clipped it, and that was him out. Um, with Martens doing the, sort of the same thing behind him, ending up sort of nose it first into the barrier and then Daruvla just sort of piled into the back of him ending up under him akin to Verstappen Hamilton mm. turn one two at Monza in 21 so yeah interesting move there and then Porsche and Leclerc ran wide behind them and this saw Vesti take it's the very lead. funny crash that because they kind of like stopped it just before they hit it but they were also then buggered and couldn't do anything yeah they were they were sort of screwed at that point because the, all of a sudden the rest of the field goes past them and there was no chance of really getting back at it Vesti took the lead something that had happened to him last year where he sort of inherited the lead within in one of the races um, mm-hmm. but Behrman put him under pressure and eventually made the pass and took the win and it was a really mature drive from Behrman like this was some proper big brain moves making a from statement. Him. Yeah, um, everyone from P11 down was sort of DNFs, really. It was a very small field that finished. Correa P6, a fantastic position from the guy coming back into F2, back into this league of racing, and really making himself known for this one. And it's fantastic seeing this recovery drive from Correa. I say recovery drive, it's not a recovery drive in the sense of this race, but for his career, oh, it's, career. it's amazing. Love it. Um, and then Kushmini, P4, again, not having a bad season. A really good driver very coming out. just capitalising on the chaos and, okay, you had a bit of luck to get there, but you need to be there at the same time. Yeah, you need to be there. And trying to be there around Baku is really something important. So, yeah, Kushmini. I don't want to say a dark horse, but certainly a talent no one expected to be coming to a the fore quite surprise, so much. A surprise to be season. sure, but a welcome one. Yes, very much. Uh, the net result for this one was Ollie Behrman on P1, Frederick Vesti P2, Jack Crawford, Jackie Moon P3. So not too bad there. Nice little race. And then we rolled into the feature, which by comparison was quite a dull affair with Behrman fending off Porsche through the race trading places once, but ultimately Porsche fell back into the clutches of Enzo Fittipaldi, the young Brazilian pinching second as Porsche now had to watch his teammates in the mirrors edging closer. Though Martens would later be disqualified due to, due to a technical infringement with some of the floor fins, essentially at the mouth of the side pods being too low. Um, the net result saw Behrman scoop up all bar one of the maximum available points this weekend. That elusive final point was taken by a decently driven Isaac Hadjar, setting the fastest lap in the feature. Um, Hadjar does need to learn to take a chill pen on the team radio, though. That's a note from you. What was that? Yes, song? he does. He was, spotted? he was just getting angry on the team radio a couple of times, and, it's, and I can't remember what over, but it just very much, it reminded me a little bit of Nick Neck from The Man with the Golden Gun, which didn't help things either, and finally take him seriously. And the, his, his engineer was just essentially telling him to calm down and just focus on the job in hand. It was like, you're, you're having an all right race, but you're not having such a good race that you should be getting this angry about whatever it is you're moaning about. So just calm, mm. <laughs> focus on the driving and it's going to it's gonna come to you. You just need to focus maybe and less, less shouty shouty or drivey drivey. Speaking of team radios or good team radios from the feature race, um, obviously podium we had Oli Bam and Enzo Fittipaldi and Teo Porcher, but it seems that <laughs> Enzo lost track <laughs> Enzo of where he realize. was in the race. <laughs> He thought he was coming home P5 or P6. He thought his engineer was joking when he said P2. It was He sort of mocking laughed back. And then he was like, no, seriously, where have I come? I went P5, P6. And he went, no, you're P2. And he was like, what? It was incredible. It was really nice to see the sort of the joy in the fact that 
he's he's got this good achievement. He's really that's that's the kind of focus that. you need to be, Isaac Hedger, on the race that you don't, don't even know where you finish because you're too busy trying to get the guy in front. <laughs> yeah, you're so focused on track position and really working through it. And yeah, it was a great race from Enzo Fittipaldi. Really impressed me with that one. And um, yeah, got to say the fact that yeah, coming out of it, you've got that P two. It's a really nice position to have and he's definitely going to get a race win at some point this this seat year that it's almost mm. certain i don't know if it's I going to be a it sprint as as or... mm, yeah he, he was good there in f3 and i just think that uh, and i think he was good there in f2 last year if i'm if i'm remembering correctly so yeah i don't think there's good that potential there for it um does lead me on to a little thing that i was having a think about during the f2 feature race which is a small formula 2 driver proposal which i'll just propose now and we can talk about in more depth another time i think and that is in the interest of making sure that there's always enough room for drivers coming through not just from necessarily f1 academy but formula 3 as well even though we had a flurry of them this year maybe limit formula 2 drivers to having a maximum of three seasons in formula 2 because it then gives you three options for what to do if you're realistically going to make it to Formula One or a higher form of motorsport, say IndyCar, for example. And you either do an Oscar Piastri and you come in and you win it in your first season. You either do an Nick Schumacher, you have a rookie season to get grips with everything, and then second season you do everything they need to do and you put it all together. Or you do a drug of it and you have one last flying attempt at it and you just manage to pull it all off and you get a, a well-deserved reserve driver seat at Aston Martin. And... If we did imply that, um, oh, sorry, employ that proposal onto the current grid, we would free up five seats for drivers that are potentially more likely to get into F1. Because I think, with the exception of one name on this list, none of these drivers are going to get into Formula One at any point in the future. So the drivers we'd be getting rid of are Jay Handerivola, which I don't think he's going to go for Formula One. And I think you've agreed on that previously, as far as last year in the summer when we were talking about uh, Formula Two drivers. When we had uh, Jacob Teo... when we were talking about it, yeah, I think yeah. definitely GT or work sort of thing. Yeah, Teo Porcher, which is harsh, but also he's not kind of delivered in a lot of ways as much as people might have hoped, including Sauber, I think. And if he doesn't make it to F1 next year, I don't think he will, um, which would be a shame. But it's kind of, it shows that you need to be on it consistently and quickly. And he's kind of, Behrman's potentially outshining him in the case of younger driver coming through. He's now, Behrman is now the second youngest uh, race winner in Formula 2 history after Paul Chair. Mm. And you've got to think if he can, I don't think he'll win the championship, but if he can at least contend for it, then Paul Chair could be worried about that. We'd also then be getting rid of Roy Nassani, Richard Vashaw and Ralph Boschong, which... You may be fans of any of those and all of those, but I don't think that any of those three are going to get to Formula One and it's possibly then worth employing a three-season rule. Weirdly, Roy is the only one that's at risk of getting an F1 scene. I say at risk because he's still linked <laughs> yeah. to William Ac- Williams Academy. Obviously, his dad raced in F1, so there's that sort of paternal sort of nepotism that's going to link him in there. I think he's the only one that stands like a real risk of getting into F1, which is a shame because it almost sort of... Oh, I don't know. He it, it's weird because he was in the Williams Academy at the same time as Chadwick, and always seemed to get picked over Chadwick for FP1 drives, which was strange. But I don't. Know. I think Porsche could get into F1. He could. I don't know how yes. long he'd last in F1. He'd be sort of definitely one of those sort of Marcus Ericsson types where he just. Again, be, it's it's one of those it. things. It's very much the last chance saloon for him to get there now. Mm. And I think by kind of keeping an eye on that and filtering out, then you kind of make sure that you're always bringing, you're always going to make sure that those drivers coming into F1 then are good and are worthy of it. And they're not just hanging around past their, their sell by date essentially and keeping things fresh because you want the hottest talent in your F1 team if you're looking for a new driver you're not necessarily looking for a driver that's been in F3 or oh, sorry in F2 for two or three years mm. or oh, sorry you want someone who's been there a maximum of three years you don't want them to be in there for four or five or anything like this and you kind of think hmm is there a reason you're still there after all this time yeah but why has no one again, else picked you sort of last guy picked during PE yeah. lessons so which, you said one of those drivers was likely to be getting into F1 which one was it or have I already sort of put chair that was put chair for me I think there. that's the only way I could see doing it but again that the 
the clock is ticking there. But I shall move on to drivers that stood out. And in Formula 2, I've got to go with Vesti because he came second and fourth and got yeah, he got nipped by Berman. But in terms of consistency, it was a great weekend and he's in P2 in the standings. Just three points off poor chair now. Consistency is key, as we always say. But I also think that Kushmani, as we mentioned, deserves a shout out for continuing to impress P4 and P5 this weekend for the rookie and beating teammate Boshong easily. He's definitely a driver that we weren't expecting much from at the beginning of the year, and he has been just very pleasant surprise, like we said. Yeah, who? So Porches now leads this year's F, um, F2, I take it. He's, he he's in the lead now. It's not a big gulf to Vesti, though, and Awas is not that far off, so it's still nope. quite all to play for within the top three, at least. Behrman's closed the gap, but yeah, he now ties with Kushmini. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting mix up there. Um, yeah, I think for me, though, my my sort of driver that stood out has got to be Behrman, though. Untouchable all weekend, really. And very metered drive, resisted the pressure from Borgia, knew how to apply it to the drivers around him. It was a, a drive from a man many years his senior. In reality, it was a very mature drive, and I quite liked that. As for the spinners, for me, I had to go and choose Stanek on this weekend. He couldn't take advantage of the sprint race chaos and then finished the feature race down in P17, so another point this weekend. He kind of impressed in F3, but hasn't done anything to to win my words of praise this year. For me, I'm going to be really mean, and especially because anime is not even <laughs> listening in the sidelines. Oh, good. Go on. I, as much as I like the guy, and as you always love saying this to me, oh, because he's a nice guy, doesn't mean he's any good at racing. I was literally um, about to say that. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the words right out of your mouth. You say it every week, every time we mention the goddamn guy. Um, but yeah, I think we're getting to the end of potentially what this boy's le- got left on the table. Just say his name. <sighs> Come on, Novelac. Wait, say his name. <laughs> yeah, Clement Novelac. I. Yeah. I'm struggling to see what more he's got to offer. And nice guy. Really entertained to listen to on his own podcast. Um, I, I'm just not inspired by his drives. And it took like a, a jumbled up sprint to see him get anywhere decent. And the feature just nowhere. So do better. Please prove me wrong, Clemmel. <laughs> please prove me wrong. And also, please have me on screen meals. I, I don't <laughs> mind. Um, so, We're moving yeah. swiftly on F1 Academy. We're just going to do winners because spinners is hard to do as the first three races were all back-to-back and we didn't see anything. So I'm just going to say Amr al stood out for me just because of consistency. Fifth, first, and third puts her second in the championship now after the first races. So i got to choose someone and I didn't want to go Route 1 and Marta Garcia, which you're likely to do, Jesse. Nope, I'm going to go for Abby Pulling. She is my absolute favourite in that series. There's a bloody surprise. She is, it's, but she drove fantastically. The gaps she was she pulling, does. when you look at the live timings and data and stuff that was made available, her qualifying times were sublime. Like She was a mm. good way up the field in those quality sessions. And despite the fact that she was disqualified from all of them, worked her way right up into like, I think at one point she finished with like P6 in one of the races, I think I'm correct in saying. So she's able to fight through that field and yeah, she gets her elbows out and proves why she's in contention for these bigger seats, why she's got that Alpine Academy backing. She has been working her socks off ahead of this season. Like her physical training, her race prep has been phenomenal and it's showing off, even though she was disqualified from qualifying for something that's not her fault. No, she exactly. really, she really sort of hammered home why she's in that series across the weekend. So, yeah, as far as I can tell, again, I've seen none of the racing. All I've seen is where she finished and knew roughly where she started because DSQ. Um, but yeah, there we go. Spinners, like we said, it's hard to do as the first three races of the season, all back to back. We didn't get to see any sort of adjustment across those races, and neither yeah. did we get to see any of it at all but we'll certainly circle back to this later when we've got more sort of information in hand there are going to be drivers that we believe not necessarily spinners but as we often think with our feeder series could, could definitely do be doing better of strategy yeah it's not so much a case of they did badly but there's certainly room for improvement Anyway, in the driver and constructor standings, we'll start off with Formula 2 for the drivers. We've got Paul Chen now leading away with 65 points. Vesti, three points behind him in P2 on 62 points. And Iwasa now down to P3 with 58 points. But like we were saying, very nice, tight field there. And that's just the top three. Constructors-wise, we've got Prima out in front with 103 points. Dams in second place with 92. And ART Grand Prix with 82 points in third. 
Meanwhile, over in F1 Academy, we've got Marta Garcia, unsurprisingly, leading the way with 58 points. And then we've got the Al Kobasi sisters in second and third, with Amina in second with 36, and Hamda in third with 26 points. Constructors wise, Premier lead the way with 82 points. Their name, MP Motorsport, in second with 65 points. And Roden Carlin rounding out the top three with 53 points. And all kind of very nice and tight there across the board for both feeder series, which is exactly what we love and exactly what we expect from feeder series, regardless if we can watch it or not. No, although, again, we'll say it's like a public announcement. Um, if you want to go and watch F1 Academy, <laughs> we found this okay. out. You'll probably hear this in the Miami preview, which is the next episode that will come out. Um, 20 euros gets you into Circuit Ricardo Tormo, gets you into Valencia this weekend coming where they have, it's branded as their NASCAR fest. It's got the Wheel and NASCAR series for the Euro Cup and all that. Um, but it's also got the F1 Academy there. For 20 euros, you can go in and watch it. So I think that also covers you for both dates, as far as I, my rudimentary Spanish could tell me off their website. Uh, half price if you're age 6 through 14, and if you're 5 and under, it's free. So um, for our 5 and under listeners, of which I assume there are probably none, um, free entry to Circuit Ricardo Dormo this weekend in Spain. Um, but if you do genuinely want to go and watch F1 Academy, and you have the opportunity to, I think it's wholly it's suggested. Worth the watch. Yeah. I think it's probably worth a watch, but it'd be great to actually have some support there for it in person to prove that people want to watch this stuff and mm-hmm. that it's important. Tell your friends, for... bring everyone, go and have a have a just a massive crowd with you and go and just go and support all the drivers. They also thoroughly deserve it. Cheer on Abby Pulling. Also, it's Spain, so it's going to be home race for Marta Garcia and Lorraine Marti. Mm-hmm. All the more reason. Go do that. Yeah, But that is all we have time for on this week's episode. Join us again soon when we have some more excellent F1 content for you. So make sure you've liked, subscribed, and got notifications turned on to not miss anything. Jesse, where can people find you in the meantime? Uh, in the meantime, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter as at Jesse on Cars. You can also find the podcast on Twitter. We're at the Undercut Podcast. Um, if you want more of me, you can find me in Classic Car Weekly, reviewing old cars, going off to events, doing all sorts of bits and pieces. The latest issue should be out when this podcast goes out. So you can read about my life with my little MG sports car. I take it to the New Forest and visit some F1 uh, manufacturers on the way home. And crucially, I might be making a YouTube comeback. So we'll wait and see on that one. I've got plans for this weekend to try and do something. Anyway, we'll see that when we believe it. I think. Yes. We believe it when we believe, see it. Believe it when you see it, rather. Yes. Timo, uh, where can the people find you? You can find me over on Is It Fast, on the Curves Paddock Sorority, the Nitro RX podcast, and of course, Instagram. But that is very much all we have time for on this week's episode. And we very much enjoyed all the feeder series action, and we're going to have to wait a little while, I think. We may do something on Valencia. We may wait until after Imola and just lump it all together in one thing there. We'll just figure that out as we go. But in the meantime, thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you again very soon.